So uh, thank you, thank you so much for having me here, both of you, and thank you, Andrew, for connection. Um, and I think we know each other a few months. Um, we've been doing a movie for one year and a half, I think. Uh, yes, that's correct. Um, Late uh, 2015. Yeah, yeah. So uh, Philip the name is an entity um, belong to the 600 uh, Fab Labs in the world, and the original uh, from MIT. So. Um, we have been working on researching for maybe 20 years before having FabLab. So it is a combination of um, you know, different entities joining to found it. Uh, it could be some of the rich people who want to give money back to the uh, younger people. So you can donate uh, machines uh, into FabLab. And it could be some of the faculties with their time and efforts uh, from the University of Penang and also University of Arizona State, for example, so far. So it's a mix. And that's why um, ASU, Arizona State University, um, working with us, um, because we founded FabLab. And so we was connected by the ambassador um, of the US to Vietnam. And yes, Nate Rachel Mayer. Um, Which one? He found it, it's a Ted Osias. OK. Yeah. So um, he um, interested in the model we conducted at FabLab, and I'm going to talk about it. Um, and so he visited us, and he connected us with ASU. So we started working with ASU from November in 2015. So it's about maybe one year half until now. And a lot of things coming up. And besides that, I run um, a new school um, now as a, a dean of uh, School of Innovation, uh, now School of International Education at the University of the Land. This is a, a small school. Um, we already have a nine schools um, with a total of 55,000 students. So it's a big, it's a big one in the name. Um, well, you um, said 55,000. Yeah, 55,000. Yeah. Um, and then a public school, so the uh, tuition fee uh, for, all this, for all the students is super low. I think uh, it's just like, um, Five hundred dollars a year, so for five years, uh, if you want, um, earn a degree of engineering for that, mm -hmm. and for four years for business school. Fifty thousand here, uh, so, so it's, it's it's a huge difference. Um, <clears throat> that's why you see a campus here and you can. Did you, know, you say fifty thousand here? Mm -hmm. That's it's forty thousand here. For a year, right? Yes. But in Vietnam, well, it's just five hundred. Five hundred for a year. That's that's, that's crazy. Different. So so yeah. much different. And if, if we employ, um, um, if we hire a person, you know, um, here we employ a person maybe equal to 20 people in Vietnam. So you have five people here in America, that's enough money to pay for 100 people in Vietnam. Wow. So that's, that's huge in America and Vietnam and stuff. And, and that's why I think the university um, system in Vietnam, I don't know, it's, it is a lot of years to take off with this high salary. So when I found the Fab Lab, it actually is a social entrepreneurship. And the reason why I did it because we learn a lot of theory, but it's actually useless um, to apply. <laughs> and uh, we want to start something with children first. And that's why yeah. we start innovation with learning and uh, progressively Hopefully we can make something, um, maybe in the next few years for entrepreneurship. So it's really very early phase, and now we just focus on innovation. It could be for fun, uh, it could be for study, and at the same time learning English as well. Yeah. It could be something for curiosity of people to make something, and hopefully a few years later it can be um, it can be an enterprise. So it's very early phase now. <coughs> And um, as I talked to Kulin, um, living a few years in America, so I copy things that I feel interested in. Uh, it could be about the house, um, it could be about the machine, so try to mimic it uh, in Vietnam so um, people can um, take a look and yeah. feel it's by. Mm -hmm. It's the only mm -hmm. trust construction I've yes. seen yes. in Vietnam. <laughs> <laughs> in Vietnam ever, the first, first time. Yeah, it, it's just fascinating. You go in there and like walking into a basement. Yeah, just uh, and you, yeah. So there you can so, see. So I started with this um, garage um, uh -huh. 
it's just about 2,000 2, square feet. It's a small space, um, but it's good for, for starting. So we put in it, um, you know, different machines, like a 3D printer, browser, cutter, leaf saw, frame, and so on. And we raise funding uh, from the community yes. uh, to serve the community. So, um, and these people are working with us. Business, tech, they are making all uh, hydroponics. Yeah. Uh, so within, within the first five months, we, um, we started with this space. Um, and you can see here all the trust we put um, and safe mat uh, plate. You know, even the elevator, we are working on it ourselves. So to learn about how to manufacture uh, an, uh, an elevator. Mm. Yeah. And uh, this is some of the space people can try with hydroponics uh, mm -hmm. on the top floor. Mm -hmm. And you know, the kids can learn about the HVAC system, uh, which runs mm -hmm. through the house. So there's some of the other floor, which is magnificent, but I don't show here, because I hope I can show you in person. Right? <laughs> okay. So this is just an ugly part. <laughs> And the tools, very simple tools. Mm -hmm. And before we found FabLab, actually we searched on 20 different ideas. It could be, you know, product or service. And actually, the idea of um, establishing FabLab is triggered by the DEC. And this is um, a Vietnam Engineering Education Conference, mm -hmm. which is hosted by USAID and ASU in Vietnam. Yeah. So I feel more confident in order to open the FabLab. Actually, it's, it's very long time to get it profitable. I think it's just it's just like a social mission first, right? Um, and so I have to sell my my um, my former company um, to get money to, to file the So, oh, okay. so this is kind of something wow. really rare to me. Um, this is near and dear. Yeah, you. yeah. So, but I I had lived for a few years, I think. Um, so this is 3D printer uh, with the dragon brush. We, we make it and promote it to the student at the University of Penang uh, in a dinner conference. And for the kids, um, smaller kids at that lab um, to learn and, and be inspired. And we create um, the goal fed. Actually, the, um, the program that attracted to the ambassador um, so this is the simply go fabulous learning to learn because of Mackey, uh, and we are prepared at go fab. So the target is to have a 210 LVMs, LVMs learning to learn because of making class. So it's just like a session lasting in two hours, and now we're just reaching 10% of it. And the idea is to have a physical space at the school where we conduct the go fab program. And we did it with two schools. So um, within the GoFed, within this program, the student, especially the children, you learn English at the same time they learn STEM. And sometimes with art and business, but mm -hmm. focusing on STEM one. So they innovate something new, but are also related to the theory they learn in the school. So these four things um, around the GoFed. And <coughs> So this is an a sample of that one. So um, you know, so we have different LDMs, and each LDM um, we can figure out. Okay, student can learn STEA in this LDM, for example. So you can start it from the music theory, so simple one, um, to finish what's on. And we put in the technology how to do the makey makey electronic to form this kind of instrument. So. And everything, it just went in two hours. So students mm -hmm. learn about theory, maybe the first 50 minutes, by a foreign teacher. It's always about a, a foreign teacher uh, teaching them about English at the same time in theory. Mm. And just 15 minutes. And then um, they're going to be show with the equipment and the uh, components. And so they can plug it in and try to do something a little bit new finish uh, a complete project at the end of the class. And so during the class, they're, go they're going to learn about the English vocabulary and the frameworks. And, and, and it's just that simple. So each LDM is just about two hours. Or, for example, this one with physics. 
so you learn physics um, with this equation and uh, thermodynamics, and you're going to manufacture this work. Ideal gas law. Yeah, within two hours too. <laughs> so after two hours, you're going to have this one. Um, okay. And it, it can run on the coffee cup. Oh, no, on the coffee cup. So you put in the uh, oil water, and you have this one on the top, and it, it can run. Yeah. Hi, Tito. So Tito's right. <laughs> you look funny, Tito. <laughs> oh, Mr. Mom. Um, uh, just maybe we should uh, maybe you should let them know quickly what you're talking yeah. about. So, yeah. hi, Huang. How are you? So, I, I Huang's a DC. Okay. Okay. So, we just to skip a little. Um, just let them know what you're talking I mean, your name <laughs> and what you're talking about right now, and then we'll get continued. Hi, hi, and Juan Tito and um, Han. Han. So, um, I'm just talking about um, three things. Um, your first one is um, an open source um, digital fabrication laboratory, um, how to open it in Vietnam. The second one is a program uh, to trigger innovation. For the children, and the third one will be one of the startups um, focusing on social mission uh, with the rehabilitation device uh, for the stroke for the stroke people. Yeah. And I'm Hoi from Vietnam, from um, University of Da Nang, um, professor and dean and founder of um, the the groups that he's going to talk about now. Yes. Please continue. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, use case learning, and use case is from the Skylight International School in Danan, one of the, uh, one of the, uh, I think the uh, most open-minded school in Danan now. Mm. Uh, it's still controlled by the government, but uh, you know they somehow try to to be much more open at, as much as they can. Mm. So, um, they are the first one to accept a uh, no-fed program integrated into the curriculum. So they. They carry the student to Fairfax um, every week. Oh. Now, now um, the international school, is it English and Vietnamese or just Vietnamese? It's still Vietnamese. Okay. Yeah. So, so this, this one is international but by the Vietnamese people. Mm -hmm. You have some of the Singapore old international school, which is old in English. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and this is uh, Mr. Uh, Ted Osir's ambassador, oh, yeah. uh, which he visited us uh, in August. Just two months after we opened the program, mm. and so his visit changed everything. You know, because our program is supposed to be new, and it's hard to be accepted by by the schools. But his visit came in, and you know, we had a lot of opportunities to work with the schools to integrate our. So you just said program. approved by the ambassador of yes, the U.S. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and and he came together with the USCG um, uh, Council General Rina Vita. And she's now um, the new ambassador to Laos. Oh, okay. <coughs> ambassador to to Laos. To Laos. Of the U.S. to Laos. Oh. And and we have a chance to explain what we do at FedLab to Laos next time. Wow. Yeah. yeah so he, he she talked with Chef, yeah. and she wants to do uh, to bring something we are doing here to Laos. Nice. Uh -huh. So um, the students learning, and he came in and he talked with the students how. He, how you think about the, the new program mm -hmm. and what they can do and so on. Mm -hmm. What they can learn from this uh, 3D printing learning, for example, or music or or physics. Mm -hmm. And we always use um, a foreign um, lecturers for the first 15 minutes mm -hmm. uh, to teach the English. So to make sure that the English uh, teaching is still standard. Mm -hmm. Not long, just 15 to 30 minutes. Right. And then, Thank you. And then uh, running into the uh, innovation part. Yeah. I see. And so um, they start with paper and pencil. So you, you have to draw something they imagine. And then you can put it into the computer for the CAD design. And then manufacture it out immediately. Mm -hmm. <coughs> so you feel very excited about it. And these subjects are the things you can imagine about. So the students were able to um, speak to explain to the ambassador what they learned. Yes. Essentially. Yes. Nice. They explain directly. <coughs> so you sketch something here and it turn it into the computer and then to the physical object. 
<coughs> and these these are the examples of the objects they can do. They can manufacture um, um, a watch uh, within two hours, including the electronics component into it. Absolutely, it has a the head from the uh, people of Fairlab, but everything is just within two hours. For example, this, for this example of this one of the RFID um, sensors inside, oh. and so each student they can make um, a custom for their for their own and with a, a unique um, ID in this one. So when they come into the class, they can scan it. Mm. And they, so, you know. Yes. Okay. Hello, Hi. Hi. Nice to meet you again. Hi. Hey, how are you? Hey, how are you doing? Oh, sorry, it's sorry, it's so informal here. <laughs> 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 I'm in the middle of the work. Oh, 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 oh. Is it over here? Roll, 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 roll it in. Oh, so after lunch, so now just see what we have. So, um, so um, Mr. Hoy is talking about the Fab Lab that he started in Vietnam. And, um, yeah, so the projects in Vietnam that he's working on. Or, or example, someone um, you know a little bit more curious, they can um, they can see this lock, um, American lock, to be open and closed by oh, yeah. a room or or by this one. So scan in and they can open the lock. <laughs> or um, so we we have some work in November of uh, of the same year. Uh, this is the. Uh, how to, how to say it. So she is the chief OAS president um, of the US. Um, so chief OAS, I think it's a big organization in DC. Is it an Asian organization? It's the Academy of um, Advancing um, something, I don't know. Okay. <laughs> That's not the chief OAS is the name of um, the Asian American Studies Association. Um, Mike Micro, okay. so, so funny you said that. <laughs> like, no, I don't think she's president of ours. And, and she was uh, promoted as um, the science envoy of the President Obama. Mm -hmm. And so she visited us, and before she came in, we worked together for a Volcano MDM. Mm -hmm. So she worked with us for a, a simple theory, and then turned it into a real experiment. And so the student can see uh, how, how you can make uh, just with the food ingredients, but uh, to be a avocado. Mm -hmm. So, so during these experiments, it's in English. It's everything in English, right. and it's constrained into two hours only. Oh my God! <laughs> so everything is kids. in two hours. So you learn about that, <clears throat> and you know, um, because we we have a social mission driven. So we rise from four people until now um, thirty people. Mm -hmm. And in which we have almost 20 people working full time. So, for that. Okay. so it's very quickly um, moved to within two years. And this one, we work together um, and fed at the lead. Uh, we work with business people in the Global Shapers, um, which is an organization under WEF. And these companies uh, sponsor us. Um, Autodesk sponsors us two thousand dollars, and AG sponsors us another two thousand dollars. We're taking you know, two thousand dollars and so on. This one with the equipment, and so we together um, building a metal week. and it left um, within six weeks um, actually. But each portion uh, accumulated for a week of innovation, and that's why we named it. Week. Uh, Question: um, So what is your annual budget? Um, so the, the budget we, we rise is from these these things. So not much. Not much. No, so not much. Not much. And, 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 and the and the teachers are volunteers. Yeah, all the teachers volunteer, uh -huh. all the advisors, um, mentors, and organizers are volunteers. Mm -hmm. And this is for the students from nine to twelve grade uh, uh -huh. compete together, and um, finally we have uh, the winner uh, with uh, one thousand dollar. Yeah, that's that's nice. Nice. Yes. And so this, this is very highly promoted by the USCG. Um, they love the idea very much. Um, so we had a very successful one um, with a lot of partners involved at the same time. Mm -hmm. 
And so welfare program, for example, we now embed it into this school. And so far, it, uh, it trained um, 2,500 students. Um, How bad? We did six months. For six months? Yes. Wow. So for this yeah. for six months, 2,500 uh, students. Is but each one is just one, one area of two hours. So is the goal to be in all the nine schools? Yes, it's the goal to be in all the nine. And we also submitted to the USG to expand it into what you can see. But but mostly now it's got to be in the end for us. So this is a kind of mood uh, we placed into the uh, the school that we wanted to run the area. And so uh, now with this school we have uh, two of these ones. <coughs> so it's a small space, it's in it house max of um, twenty people mm -hmm. and these students are it. And we figure out that we need to keep the number of students to be small so they can interact very well with the people who run the area. Mm -hmm. I would imagine private schools would really want this. So is that a problem with getting schools to sign up? I think it's not difficult. But the problem with this model is um, the money to run it is really a lot. And so um, we, we cannot find uh, a, profi um, a profitable model yet. I see. So, as much as we want, uh, we have to fundraise money from somewhere to, to, to keep it running. So, it's expensive. The problem is, it's not cheap. Right. But, I'll wait to see. Oh, will you talk about the, your philosophy in targeting very young kids? Yeah. For young kids. Um, so this, this program targeted at um, the student from six to twelve grade. Right. That's that. So what was your what was your reasoning in targeting such a young population? Um, uh, because innovation, we want to start with someone really young. You know, the older one, maybe they already run through a, a public system already, and now it's going to change. But these younger people, it's easier. Please introduce yourself real quick. I'm so sorry. My name is Peter Hendricks with the School of Education. Yes, and so, and nice to meet you. So, why is come visiting us from um, the University of Danau? He's talking about uh, the programs he's conducting okay. there for the, these particular outreach to young children. Okay, great. So, um, so each of the LDM we run, uh, we met, we, we calculate like a. Uh, it's about $10. Per time, but we have to subsidize uh, sixty percent of that money by by fund by by, by fund wise. Yeah. So that is a big yeah. mm -hmm. right. So we always need the. Uh, okay. 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 So come on, please be natural. <laughs> this candy <of> pictures. <laughs> so. So we, we have uh, some of the metrics to evaluate um, what students can learn from. Uh, for example, this one, general information. So the first thing you learn, it got to be English. Uh, because a lot of people of Vietnam now, I think almost every time, you, you, you're going to learn English. So the first thing is to English. So the second thing will be in, um, sometimes in years, um, we add art and Disney as well. And the third one is they got to innovate for two hours. It could be physics, it could be electrics, it could be mechanical or chemical. Mm -hmm. So we have multiple subjects. But, and for now, we complete only, only 21 areas. The target is still far away. The target is 210 areas. Oh. Yeah. So, so this kind of thing, and and we work on these things, and now we move one more step. Uh, we got a certificate from ASU, so now ASU zoom in and they say we can accredit this program and can supply the certificate. So that's a good step because now we can run out bigger, and all of the school having students joining us can have ASU certificate. And you know, MIT, for the first time in, back to a few years ago, they can evaluate um, the new students um, by having about 10% of MECOs. So see if the students have been MECO editing um, in the past. 
Uh -huh. And so as you now follow the same model, and they want to stop with Vietnam first. Uh -huh. So you can certify the program, and if those with the certificates in the future, and if they can learn in STEM field, they can have a bigger chance to be accepted. Uh, so Arizona State University, yeah. and they work uh, a lot in Vietnam in, in, in the last seven years. So this is kind of like a model, yeah. and this model has been experimented in government as well as private schools. Yes. Right. So those schools that accepted the model sort of factor that into their curriculum. Right. And so, so when you bring these models to these schools, the funding to sort of execute the model comes from the funds raising and not from the school that accepted the model itself. Yes, the school has contributed about one third of the... Uh, one third of the cost. Yes. Okay. Cost. So like each child has to pay $10, then $3 from the uh, yeah. school itself, $7 from outside. So if if a friend of mine in Ho Chi Minh City yeah. would like to contribute the funding can they take this model, work with you, take the model, yes. and try it out in a Ho Chi Minh City yes. school, yes. private school? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, sorry, we have questions. Okay. Um, so, your thought is create the model, uh, monetize it, um, and then anyone would, that would be interested can buy the package. Yeah, and, can we and, scale it and you can, okay. And we, work, we, we don't work on it alone. So we started alone with Fairlab, but then we wish are working with the University of Penang, and now working with ASU. So, so the only component that I'm uh, uh, questioning is the, um, the, the instructor. So I can see you guys having packages for um, instructors, but they, they, you need a formal training program. So have you thought about a formal training program or an online training program for those individuals to conduct the labs. Yeah. So for now we have a we have a program to train the trainers uh -huh. but face to face. Mm -hmm. uh, we are shifting it by integrating Moodle uh, which can have us a part of that training to be our okay. yeah. so we are working on it too. Okay. When you talk about accreditation, um, who accredit the program? So ASU? ASU, yes. Okay. So yeah we're working with us and okay. now um, they are agreed to certify the program. Okay. So so when they say they accredit or they certify this program, do they certify just the material that's being in this package or they certify the instructors in the whole setup? In the whole setup. The whole setup. So that is about the quality of the instructors or yeah. in the program so and the syllabus and the lateral. So to implement it beyond the name, yeah. you would need instructors that would meet the criteria yes. of the of the certification. Yes. And it got to be trained. And it, we, we train it very quickly because now each LDM is just two hours on. So it's, it's quite simple. Right. And if we can scale out this simple one massively, then we can move forward yeah. into something more sophisticated. Right now it's a very simple one. Which, which office at ASU is doing the certification? So that is Funtan School of Engineering. The School of Engineering. Yeah, and the, the one who do, you can, so the one who is working with us is Chef Ross. He's um, associate vice provost yeah. of uh, ASU. Mm -hmm. yeah. So is the the certification? I'm wondering what what organizational body is giving the certification. If it's an academic department at ASU, um, how is that relevant in, um, is that, is, is it seems like it may be interpreted as an endorsement? Mm -hmm. Or is it a, um, for example, in early childhood education in the United States, there's an organization called the National, National Association for the yeah. Education of Young Children, and they are responsible for certifying um, daycare centers and preschools and things like that, and they have strict criteria. But, so I'm trying to understand the, 
the process of, of having certification or accreditation? I think for now it, it just it just belongs to ASU internally. Uh, it's not reaching out for the regional accreditation board at all. No. So it sounds like some some positive recognition, yes. some yes. endorsement of the academic quality. Yes. Um, but we we are moving forward, and um, I can tell a little bit when we reach out to the end for the maker space. So Fairlight is now for children, but we're going to have a maker space for um, for undergrad and up. Mm-hmm. And the other one, we have an um, EPICS program um, originated by Purdue University, but ASU and a lot of universities adopt it. And so if we move into that pathway, we're going to have a bigger accreditation, uh, accreditation uh, in a few years. Yeah. Yeah. But now it's just an initial step. Yeah. Because this, this program is just about two years old. Yeah. That's does the accreditation include some measurements of success or measurement yes. of results? Yes. And how what is the cycle? Like three years uh, for or like cycles of a class completion to show some sort no, of a test, test result. So now it's not it's just immediate um, just after two hours what the student can get. Okay, got it. And for now it's just that simple. So it's a it's quick module. Yeah, it's just a quick module. Yeah. Do you have or participated in yeah. one LDM. Yes. And we have that one to be a you know, measure of a, a, a thousand people. Just a one thousand people. Oh. Professor Wang, um, I don't know if you're aware of this, but uh, there's an extension program where they, they constructed a new facility mm-hmm. for, for these purposes. But I don't know really the particulars. Professor Valverde might know more than myself. But I think the University of California Davis is, is equipped to provide accreditation and certification, both training, uh, curriculum development, and uh, accreditation services, I believe. Oh, so I just wanted to let you know that yeah. this is something you might want to explore here yeah. as well. Yeah. Yeah. So I think, I think yeah, um, and I think Mr. White also will be meeting with administrators oh, to um, negotiate something like that. So yeah. I think, you know, that's why I was asking, like, what things you need for your various programs in the university mm-hmm. that we can provide as a service. And yeah. we, we would also want to uh, encourage uh, Professor awesome. Hamor, please join us. Okay, okay. <laughs> Thank you. We're not going to yes. treat you like a second class citizen. Oh, not here? Okay. Not here. <laughs> That's a refreshing thing. Okay. Uh, we, we also um, are emphasizing in our department and university wide because we have an undergraduate research uh, program that uh, actually Ms. Doe here participated in. So we are looking also for opportunities for undergraduates. We're, we're looking to get people at a very early stage in their university careers into trans-Pacific, international, or local initiatives like this. So if you can think along those lines, that'd be wonderful. We have, I think, three undergraduates right here. Are you an undergraduate? Okay, there you go. They're very much interested in And this is what distinguishes us from other research institutions, I guess, which heavily weighted towards graduate education, PhD level, primarily. Yeah. But we want to get them upstream. Yeah. So, yeah. Does this fab lab Denang uh, offer any off the shelf maker products? So like little bits, which is a company that offers kits. No, we, we don't do it. Okay. Um, yeah. But then let's take on I think they choose that hat. Is, we, we don't. is there a reason why you decided not to I, I think uh, because your startups, if, if they are in America or Silicon Valley, they can do it much better than us. We focus on the service um, rather than creating something that can really high quality product. We are not there yet. At least, at least in the next five years, I don't see we have a capability to do it as a high quality we need. Or as, as a reseller. Yeah, right. And we don't do the reseller too because. This is a social mission, so if we sell something, maybe the parent will be saying, okay, this is a business model. So we don't need to. Oh, quick picture um, over here. Oh, can you get in the middle for us? And then in the middle, make, sure, make sure you can see the camera. Thank you. That's right. Okay, so you want to keep it to be like. Um, but is it non-profit or profit, ultimately? It's, it's for profit, but uh, in the, at least in the first three years, it's not for profit. Right. 
long term, we hopefully can do something now because uh, and maybe after three years, if it's not um, about finding a business model, we just convert it into NGO or for the welfare program. Yeah. So that is the plan. Um, so that is the first one, the welfare, a small program we um, initialized for the first time in Japan. Um, and we is probably um, on 2,500 um, students so far. Yeah. And it's both with uh, public and private school. Yeah. So. And the second part um, I want to talk is um, about a few startups. We work together and uh, there's one case study, uh, the Go Go Head, um, which we focus most about. Um, so go go have means um, double go um, and rehab dictation. No. So so the people with stroke, um, with the stroke in America, if here you have about eight hundred thousand people, new people getting stroke in America, and only seventeen one seven percent of those die. In Vietnam you have a two hundred thousand people new stroke every year and a half of them die. Wow. So the ratio is much bigger. And the reason is because we don't have a machine. We don't have a PT, enough physical therapy to put in with those. Mm -hmm. And they don't, you know, the patient itself, themselves, they don't feel necessary to be uh, rehab, at least for six months, for example, after stroke. So the purpose of this one is to create a very affordable device um, using ILT. Um, and also based on the research that um, I did here in DC with the college before. And so we merged everything together and tried to do a very affordable version for the uh, developing countries. So if the cost here for a stroke device we have um, will be 50,000 um, 50, um, as an average. This one is just about uh, 2,000. Yeah, so it's about one twenty fifth to scale that. And, <clears throat> and the good thing is after, after two years uh, we, we work on this one now, we got it uh, World Bank funded. Yeah, so the World Bank um, through the Ministry of Science and Technology, said fun they funded us um, about uh, 500,000 mm. yeah, for us to work on this one. <clears throat> And um, again, we don't work on this um, alone. Uh, we work with ASU for uh, for, two, uh, for for one year and a half, mm -hmm. and we work with Fab Labs um, in Saigon, in Ho Chi Minh City, and Hanoi too. Mm -hmm. And um, also um, um, another guy from MIT. Uh, so we work together. Can you, can, exactly. you can you describe the function of the device? Yeah. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you a little bit okay. when we have a picture. And some of the other projects in Danang um, that it keep me noticed will be a lock um, with a camera to be integrated and all control over the phone. So I think, and I know this one is very popular here in, in, in the US. So in Danang, uh, several people also work on it, but I don't think it's, I don't think it's a real um, startup yet. It's still very far from bringing it into the market. Mm -hmm. And uh, it related a lot to the security, um, which, you know, um, if you have it controlled by the phone, maybe the hacker can do it too. So yeah. they started it, but I don't know if it can be successful. Indianami is another startup involved with us um, in terms of um, having a, an app, um, finding a location uh, for eating or traveling is similar to Yet in Indianami. So Yuri is a similar one. Window X is, um, is about a window um, you can open up and down vertically and um, with the sensor to be connected into the iPhone and, and to the smartphone. Um, high raw a platform is um, a, a startup working on clean vegetable because we have a lot of trouble in Vietnam eating very harmful vegetables and fruits. Mm -hmm. First time working on it. Is it like a test? Yeah. Safety yeah. test. Yeah, yeah, for safety test. TOB is for a baby's win. Um, uh, we sent her to announce parents um, when the baby can. Ah, 
So these are the stuff, but I don't know how real it is. Oh, it can be applied to the reality. Yeah. I'm sorry. We visited the um, the incubator, I think, in yeah. Anan, right? Yeah. So um, some you know. some of these were now transferred into a incubator. So mm -hmm. you can see. Isn't the what what we went to that in in yeah. where um, the room is with the open. Um, um, the, the walls are all, all glass, right? And, yes. and they're working, so yeah. So it just looks like a incubator here. Yeah. So yeah, you're working very closely with us. So the May I ask? Incubator. Yes, please. Uh, I think I'll move on this question. Can you hear me? Um, yeah. It's a little bit weird. Go ahead. Go yeah, on. um, yeah, I think I have a question after me. Um, as I understand, you were recruiting a uh, like a digital device um, uh, integrated in the window, or is it like a physical one? Or... Mm -hmm. Sorry, I'm yeah. asking. Uh, actually, my mom just uh, got a little bit of a like three months ago, and she did that um, okay. uh, Can you maybe? Do not um, do not talk directly into the microphone. Maybe back off a little bit. Okay. Yeah. I, I, I can hear my voice. You need you need ear, if, you, if you don't have earphones, just back off in the microphone a little bit because you're too close to the microphone. It's blurring. No. I'm talking. Huh. Can we see your face? Maybe that'll help. We can read lips. <laughs> here but Try again, Hoàng. Uh, uh, we hear you, but not clear. Can you message us? Message us. Oh, well, maybe you can message us. Can you write? Can you write down your question? Portugal and 
the one that says something? That's the microphone? Mm -hmm. Just big testing, Tito. Okay. okay, that's good. That's a lot better. Okay. Okay, go ahead and speak. Okay, let's uh, okay. yes. Can you hear me? Yes. 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 Now we can. Great. Okay. Okay. Go ahead. So, so I, I'm asking for a question in my mind. Yes, Mr. Hoy. Uh, okay. Uh, the, the, I just want to know if there is any need to talk about expanding knowledge and education in that. Hmm. Can you hear me? Mm -hmm. What was the question? I'm not sure. College admission? The, 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 reason is, uh, the reason my question I have that question, is that uh, the central government wants uh, to double in size. I mean, that means more, double population and everything inside. Uh, uh, in, in, in a short period, period of time. And uh, the city of Danak Dan Dan still don't even have a plan to do it yet. And I, I was thinking that if that I use college education as a one of the main engine to expand the city, then probably that would be a better plan than say relying on tourism only or just trying to get really state people coming in and do resource. Because because in the central Vietnam we don't have a lot we don't have a good education. Uh, I mean college education. That, uh, this is okay and, and, and way, but they're not really stand out. The, um, so if the Nang can get invest in upgrade university education and also expand it wider to attract the students from around the nation to flock in the Nang and then and, uh, and that, that would be a, a way to attract a foreign company to come in because foreign company also like to come in to a place where you have a lot of potential worker. So I've been thinking about that question so that I can talk to the city in Danang a, 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 a strategy to expand the city to make it double inside in very short period of time. So what is the question? My question is, whoever in the night sitting there on the phone, uh, the, the, is there a, any talk in the night, uh, any news about focus on expanding college education, both both in, in quality and in quantity, to make it a major engine to expand the city? <laughs> so no. <laughs> the answer is not sure, most likely no. Yeah. I haven't heard anything, but I, I was hoping that somebody sitting in that might, might hear something. It could be a proposal. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah I, I was planning, and well, I am planning to talk to Cindy that, that night about that, but I just want to hear the rumors or whatever news about that talk because sometimes if people talk a little bit and then you 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 chip in more information it better when you come in and and code and they uh they don't expect the idea and sometimes they just kind of what the idea is that i mean who care about color education to make money you know and, and, and Juan, can you give um can you introduce yourself and give a little um bio of your background and your relationship with Vietnam? Um, yes, I am, I am an attorney in Washington, D.C., but I've uh, been involved in from, from Vietnam work since as early as 1986, and uh, formally in 1992. Uh, 86, I just started to work with the Vietnamese community out here in and basically trying to get the youth, uh, the younger generation, I mean, 
Younger Line means Young Professional Generation to pay attention to Vietnam. Uh, but not until 1992, I specifically what to before that. In 1989, I worked with um, people in uh, Washington, D.C. to, to organize the U.S. Vietnam Trade Council. Probably every, everybody heard about that name. That was, um, that was basically called U.S. <coughs> Vietnam Trade Council. Uh, so to get a lot of major company support, but at that time, it not to do business because they're not still under U.S. embargo. So the main purpose is to push for normalizations. Uh, so, so I am one of the founding members of that uh, organization. Uh, and 1992, I started to open uh, and something uh, uh, that focused heavily on the Vietnamese professional overseas called Vietnamese American education. So we started to, to go to Vietnam and teach at the uh, university and teach. Basically, at the time, we, we focused on professor and, and very high ranking professional. Uh, say, I go to uh, Ministry of uh, Justice to teach. Uh, uh, major uh, officials in the Ministry of Justice and Dean of Law School that, that type of people uh, about uh, basically things in the U.S. competition law, uh, litigation, so on and so forth. Basic. The idea is to open a window for them to look at the world, how the world operate outside. We, we don't mean that they have to really well versed in American law at that time, but we want them to know he, here is the world. And and 1992, yes, Vietnam has not developed at all. It's still very new, and things still like 50, 60 years ago in in uh, in Hanoi, it's just nothing new that you can see. The uh, and then uh, so I, I then I. Hey, Juan, so why don't we, uh, we'll continue um, talking about your background and um, in a minute we'll have Mr. Hoyt finish his presentation. I just wanted them okay. to understand where you were coming from a little bit. So um, okay. so in, in short, fast forward really quickly, Juan has been um, very instrumental in continuing to mentor young scholars um, like myself and others um, on, um, on issues in Vietnam. And he was also um, instrumental in creating a series of virtual communities that included um, Zhu Hop Singh, professionals, international scholars, and um, and continue to um, evolve various sort of online communities um, that very early on talked about development of Vietnam and in, at, at a time when there was you know no development in Vietnam whatsoever. And he and his um, partners and, and projects in DC and then um, and then nationally and internationally um, have we. Really um, been able to connect those in Vietnam with um, others around the world around training and around um, uh, just in, ge in general to give them basic um, you know understanding of development etc and involving the diaspora community and the international community in interest in development of Vietnam at a time when Vietnam was as he mentioned very economically at its lowest point so um, so he is also very much below the radar with this work but those of us in the know know of Eng Hang, so that's why I invited him to this meeting today, um, just so that he can get a sense of um, how the um, um, new generation are um, are tackling the issue of development in Vietnam. So I just wanted to give them a brief background. We'll let Mr. Hoy finish his presentation. Is that okay, Eng Hang? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> so I continue a little bit here with the uh, go, go ahead. So the issue, um, um, we just mentioned about um, it's expensive uh, for developing countries, and that's why we know uh, to to invent something uh, a little bit new, uh, which is very affordable. And the solution we have is actually, you know, this is a very old version. Now we have something newer that I cannot show uh, in terms of the um, IP. But this is something we show with the uh, President Obama 
when he came into Vietnam uh, last year. And only only three groups of stars uh, to be presented to him nice. uh, face to face. And the day I I show him this very simple and ugly one, we got some trouble, a little bit trouble with the sensor, which is not linear that we wanted. And his team, who checked it in in the first two days, cannot recognize it. But he's sitting in and he he know it immediately. Oh boy! Well, so he's not he's not irrelevant to technical, but he can know it. He know it immediately. Super smart. <laughs> <laughs> that's why he's president. <laughs> so, 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 so a few minutes with him, and so he knows what is is, and the game on the screen does not play here. And this is compared to a very expensive one from MIT, mm -hmm. uh, where I work with some of my colleagues to develop um, at the National Rehabilitation Hospital in DC. Mm -hmm. and, and so we scaled down into a version um, with a unique way to get it cheaper. <coughs> Are you working with the Media Lab at MIT? Um, no, I work just, just we bought this robot from MIT, but oh, we work, I and we work in DC. Oh. So I work uh, with Catholic University oh, of America. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> yeah. so, um, so this is just some of the evidence, um, out of the data showing we work with the patients um, as trial in DC. Mm -hmm. And we also work with healthy people and so compare. And we continue to conduct it in Vietnam. Mm -hmm. Now, the next place will be um, running by 500,000 of the World Bank. We're going to run it on 500 patients um, next year. So we have a, a much better version um, with the hardware and with the games. So the game is running on, a, on an iPad, um, all connected to the cloud. Um, to be customized to each this kind of stroke patients, um, it's like a, a artificial learning uh, mm -hmm. of each type of the patient uh, within six months of training, and this is much better now. And so we're going to run it on five hundred um, patients in the next year. The business model is still a, a very social entrepreneurship. Uh, if we are successful, we are we're not sure yet. But um, we invested ourselves 400,000, and now World Bank put into um, 500,000. Metronic and GE intending um, we can be potentially putting 400,000 as well. So we can buy all those together to continue this meaningful project. And so this one also helped me to have a chance to meet him, um, but also to bring me to uh, Silicon Valley last summer. Uh, where I met with a lot of people um, and, and hear and learn stories from different startups uh, here in Silicon Valley, right at Stanford University. And this is my wife who is also assisting me working on the GoFed program. Um, so uh, she's showing a piano uh, created within two, hour, two hours by students mm -hmm. um, to him. So it's right in the corner, but I cannot show you. So um, just the yes, um, where I can learn and capture this picture uh, directly, communicate nice. with those people. And so it's also bringing me to a sense of how to work with VC in the future. If we are successful, we can go ahead and go, go ahead. So now we don't, because we continue experimenting the market, uh, both for go ahead and go ahead. But if two years later, if we are successful, we can work with those guys like uh, 500 spots um, mm -hmm. for one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Question. Go, go, have. Um, I know that the population of people having stroke, you know, there's a lot larger than the population who have autism. Yeah. But, but children who have autism need something to interact with because they don't like to interact with humans. And I think MIT had a little model for that. I mean, have you guys ever thought about having this kind of thing for autism? Children, I, I went to Saigon one time and I was invited to a place where there's a lot of autism kids. Yeah. Um, and I was just thinking about whether you thought about that. Yes, a, yes, a doctor who joined our program, uh, and I'm going to show you that one, the Webex, and uh, Dr. Hong, um, she's developing a device for this one, internet. But I don't know how, how far it can go okay. and, and how smart it can be. Because the internet is still so small. Yeah. And I, I but there's one person.
graduated from France for and now she's living in Congo. So it's like, would you connect with us? Yes. Because, you know, I, I think a friend of mine uh, who's really wealthy in, in, in Ho Chi Minh City have a child that have autism. If I may interject something, um, I, I think it's very, very important at the ground level and in the rush to put all this infrastructure, and especially Wi-Fi related, yeah. to build in engineering and safety measures to protect children because there's a lot of science for literature and from referee journals that draw the correlation between autism mm -hmm. and Wi-Fi, especially 4G and 5G that's to come. Yeah. And it would really defeat the purpose of developing Vietnam if the population in general becomes sickened by this hidden danger that's only now beginning to gain yeah. public awareness. Yeah. We, there's huge uh, cancer clusters, for example, here at the University of California. There's rotters all over the place. Yeah. It's also linked to ADHD, all kinds of problems. Mm -hmm. So maybe Vietnam would be able to, to uh, learn from the American experience. We have a hugely sick population. And I've been teaching for 30 years. I've seen undergraduates who are robust and healthy and bright who have come down with it, uh, manifesting a, just a whole range of behavioral problems and neurological that are related to Wi-Fi. So I hope that Vietnam, as it rushes to develop, can build in these preventatives and set the example for the rest of the world. Yeah. You know, Jen says, um, it's a killing if you come to the name for the Dragon Corporation and you come down to about 200 meters, you, you can see a very luxury uh, villa uh, by Sunbrook. And it, it is, it, you are almost completely, but it's opposite to um, a television station oh, where oh, they can receive right? a lot of signal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Japanese right. people, Japanese people who love this project very much, mm -hmm. and you put the money a few years ago to order it, and now you cancel it off. Good, oh. good, good, good. Yeah, the cell phone towers are going all over the place, yeah. you know, especially with 5G. And our uh, frequencies are bombarding. Japan is probably the worst places in Asia. So it's South Korea is even worse. Yeah. So, so Vietnam could definitely prevent that. Yeah. By building it into to the, the to, system to yeah, begin with. And policy. Yeah, and policy. Yeah. Just like the Mexico has a policy against GMO corn, it's part of the Constitution. Yeah. Mm -hmm. they, they protect it because they realize that's their national treasure. Right. They're like Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. I mean, Andrew may have seen a lot of wirings of hanging, like a big oh stack of wires hanging yeah. outside of somebody's Vietnam bedroom telecommunication. In, in Hanoi, right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. That's it's got to be a lot of waves, you know, lots of it's, it's so it, intense but signals. But then they'll want to build the towers to eliminate the visual clutter. Yeah. That's not a good solution. No, not either. Yeah. It's a worse <laughs> solution, a big solution. That's how they're going to sell it. Let's beautify the city. Get rid of all the wiring. <laughs> Put these giant towers up there that look like trees. I kind of like the crazy <laughs> wires. I just don't want to be the person who look right who's like, it. well, you know, or someone calls and says something happened to our house, and then you go into that nest. Oh, you know, yeah, yeah. And you're like, so which wires do you have? You just run a new one. So <laughs> That's what happens. Yeah, they think about it, but just run a new yeah one. there you go. And, and regarding the question with Google here, um, you're asking about, so it, it includes the mechanical movement, mm -hmm. um, which you can place your two hands on it. Uh, we now focus on the elbow only, but also um, the other muscles can be included. But because now we focus in on the brain and see why we just need to focus on one joint of the human body only, since we, we, we started from the brain. But it includes mechanical part, and software with the games, uh, clinical games uh, on the, on the uh, tablets yeah, and all connected to the cloud for learning each different uh, type of stroke for each person and it can customize the games in progressive six month training. It's yeah. really cool. And instead of training exactly the, uh, the uh, you know, the, the, the arm, because with the stroke people you have half the body become uh, disabled, right? Um, so here in America, you use robots or PT to train exactly that half of the body to be visible. But we have a concept of using the good, um, the, the good, good one yeah. to help the bad arm. Oh. Um, so it's eliminate a lot of the, you know, the, the price. Yeah. So we, we 
testify that what we did. Sounds really good. Yeah. Um, so, um, and luckily this year at this, uh, yes. at, at this one, we have one startup um, coming together with Maple Hill with this um, GISD competition. So that is um, an F, um, right? Monkey Jr. Yeah, Monkey Jr. And now I have that F for um, early start from one to five years old to learn English. Oh. Yeah, and this, uh, that startup win the uh, competition. Yes, he, he beat up over 1,000 entrepreneurs. Yeah. From a and it's of called Just Tech Dash One? So it's the uh, Global Innovation in Science and Technology. Yeah. It's a State Department funded competition. Uh -huh. And he was one of eight Vietnamese entrepreneurs who joined the Global Entrepreneurship Summit in 2016 um, and won this competition. Wow. Yeah. So I think he's had over, over a million downloads. Yeah. Um, and if I recall correctly, he had paired or partnered with experts in early learning uh, childhood um, uh, domain. And so they were the ones who basically gave the requirements for what's necessary to build up these uh, skills for uh, early childhood development. He and his team actually implemented it into an application, and then they launched it on the Apple App Store. What was the name of it? Monkey, Monkey, Monkey Jr. Monkey Jr. Monkey Jr. Yeah. <laughs> now, yeah. now for the, for the, the big oh, question. Are there any measures of effectiveness of an application? Because I'm reading is, literature is saying that there's really no substitute for human teaching in, in a small group or an individual setting. And the apps are, are um, really almost next, next to useless. So I, I, far as teaching, especially the language skills, which require yeah. high levels of abstraction and conceptualization. I, I don't know if there's been a, a critical study that's been conducted on this particular app. Uh, that'll certainly be interesting if there are scholars who would be interested to assess the performance of using such an app. Absolutely. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. And, and then, I love anything monkey, monkey so <laughs> I'm down. I hear monkey, I gotta have it. <laughs> And, and, and then the reason why is that I visited the, the school at Stanford University and also the AG Makerspace uh, because since the day I founded FabLab and working with ACU now, um, they win a project of USAID and so we're going to be a similar Makerspace like this, but smaller scale, um, into University of Denver for the first time. Nice. And we are in progress. We have uh, almost all the equipment arrived. But the renovation with the license from the city keeps slowly uh, progress. And that is uh, one of the hours back. Oh, so we have seven similar days. things like this at the Makerspace, the M3D printer, um, the textile area, um, mm -hmm. the mechanical area for hackers, and then builder makers and so on. Um, uh, not this one. But so this is the floor plan of, of, of that one. It's about 500 meters square feet. And this is the uh, different zones of that. We have a metal zone, um, metal, wood, um, textile, um, double E, and electrical, and two, uh, workshops. Yeah, it's like workshop. So, so this is for the first time in Vietnam, um, we have this maker space. And it started in the land. Mm. Uh, we also hosted for the first time the, the conference um, Women in STEM mm -hmm. uh, together with Arizona State University and uh, we have 300 attendees um, which came out, we hosted this one which is very, very exciting for us. Uh, the Women Engineering Project in Community Service uh, named Webex uh, 2017. So that is a six month uh, competition and we got um, the um, general round with 46 teams and then we scale it, we just pick 26 teams on it to the semi round. Um, and uh, if you go to the website gof.world, um, so gof is just like go for fabulous or go fabrication gof.world, you can see the details of all of these things. And in, in this you have a project for the artists and kids. Of the device on the way. Yeah. Okay. So people with different uh, with different teams. Uh, we have a few teams from Ho Chi Minh, a few teams from Cantu, um, one from Hanoi, one from Hue, and the rest is in the net um, for work. 
so it's quite successful, but yes. now it's still in progress. Yeah. And people will, uh, you know, fabricate uh, the idea at the metric shop. Oh. No, no, I just need to. Um, so this is just a proposal. <coughs> So um, this is ongoing too. Um, this is uh, about Maker to entrepreneurial program. Um, so, so can you give me the link to that program that have the autism yeah. starter project? So that is G O F dot world. G O F dot world. Yeah. Good. Thank you. But I'm gonna I'm gonna connect her um, with you. Yeah, yeah, that that would be really good. Yeah. <clears throat> so this one, I, I hope um, when um, Professor Kieran to be in the name next year, we can work together for this one. Uh, we're gonna yeah, run a, a trial uh, for this year um, for a simple version of this one. But the detail, uh, I think, it for five continuous months, it will be for next year. This year, I think, it's just about a month. Um, this is just a summary um, together with the uh, partners in the name, but I, I don't think I need to talk about this um, now. So this is um, a start of event uh, hosted mm -hmm. by the NES last year, which is big. Um, this year they, they do it again um, with a hotel, with a resort near, near the beach. Surf the start of so, Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so. So we hosted this one to um, FabLab together with Global Shaper for the start of weekend, uh, which is um, a popular model, and we just adopt it and try to run it in the end. So uh, people gather together for uh, um, a certain amount of time, uh, just two days, brainstorm and pitching. And this is by the University of Economics, Winton University of the Name, um, startup run away. Oh, sorry, run, run away. Run away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm like, where did they so run away? <laughs> so then we're kidding, start run away. Uh -huh. <clears throat> um, yeah, so this is sponsored by, I think, uh, someone in the UK. And um, the pitching with the, um, with the board of judge. Are you affiliated with the Shark Tank Vietnam at all? Uh, Shark Tank, what is that? Um, so it's like a show in the US where is essentially you come and you pitch your startup or your small oh, size uh, business, and, get funding. and then yeah, and then, this, and then their DC group decide to they bid on your project. Yeah. Um, just, you know, we get twenty percent, we get thirty percent, whatever, whatever, and you know, we give you half a million to start up, blah blah blah. And so Vietnam has one now. Um, yes. So a lot, right? Correct. Oh, and so I, I was just asking if you were familiar. Yeah. Oh, it's just TV virtual. The MBI is. Okay. So, so actually, I talked with this guy, but I didn't have enough uh, resources to start with. Um, have, you, have you seen this guy? Um, the father of the FI, FI is the Father Institute. Okay. So a similar, I think, a similar model to to your uh, what you mentioned about. Shark Tank. Yeah. Oh, I see. So this one is similar to the Y Terminator. The Y Terminator. Uh, no. <laughs> Successful ed tech companies in Vietnam. Yeah. They've expanded now to four other markets Indonesia, Philippines. Uh, they set up actually the Founders Institute in Bangkok, so they're replicating mm -hmm. their success that they've had in Vietnam in other markets. Bangkok, for example. I believe they have, their, their teams have raised uh, over $10 million and they have a valuation of $60 million US in total mm -hmm. since 2011. Just in Vietnam, it's, it's just in Vietnam, yeah. But then over the summer they went to uh, Thailand. Yeah. So we, we mentioned about it in the name, but I think it's not a good time now to, uh, 
to start a FI chapter in the name, so so we're gonna talk about it, but I cannot do anything. Yeah. The name is so small. <laughs> but beautiful. I yeah, I'm I love the seafood thing. <laughs> not not anymore, right? But um, um <laughs> it's all right. it's better, better. So, yeah. so, um, <laughs> there, there there was a, a comment earlier about uh, increasing the uh, I guess competitiveness of the university system in Penang. I think that ties into positioning of the major cities across Vietnam. So what I mean by that is Da Nang has strengths that neither Hanoi nor Ho Chi Minh City have. Right. right that nice, beautiful coastline, mm -hmm. that fresh air, lower cost of living, higher quality of life. But I, I think Da Nang City has tried to go the usual route of development, which is IT parks, information technology parks, right. which right. You, know, you, you can't Separate replicate city. that yeah. and squarely match up against Hanoi or Ho Chi Minh City, you have to leverage and differentiate your strengths. Right. Mm -hmm. So yeah. that's, I think, what the question was asking. I'm not sure if you can create Da Nang into a central hub for just Vietnamese studying. I think it's probably best poised to be a place for international students to come into uh, the city and to really experience. That would be something. Yeah. Um, but I, and also, I think I also brought up this issue of doubling in size and all that. How, is that, is that good for Da Nang to, to expand and double its population in a quick manner? I mean, I think one of the appeal of Da Nang is that it doesn't, it is not overcrowded. I think you meant student population, right? Oh, is it just student population? Yeah. That's right. City. But the I thought city, you meant the city, city too. The city population right now is over a million. And it's scheduled to increase by about 30% through 2025. Th things that we usually don't think about is the infrastructure for sewage and, and drinking waters and all those things. And I happen to have information that you know they were, you know, urgency to, to build new ones because they can't handle the current flow, um, especially every time it rains. Um, right. That their sewage yes. system and their their yeah. stormwater systems are connected in some ways. That's right. So, That's right. Anyway, there's yeah. other factors too. There is, and so well, anyway, yeah, power. Is, you know, really for summer, a lot of people have to be like really hot without being able to turn on the air conditioning. Right. There's and not and enough power for people. Love it this year. Yeah, there's a lot of different things for city. And, and I think just why now solar, first solar of America, they came to Vietnam a few years ago, but they abandoned the project. Even they started building a factory, but they withdraw and then, and now they come back mm, mm. for the renewable energy. Huh. Yeah. First solar of, of the There's a lot of sun, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. I, I was out there sampling the, the Nang airport, it's very hot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. You can convert all that energy. And I met um, a former senior um, manager of Intel Vietnam, a $1 billion. Uh, he was the director of production of this Intel factory in Vietnam. But now he retired soon, and so he's already um, a similar company to Solar First, to First Solar. And now he also wants to expand the renewable energy to Vietnam. But the problem he said is um, the government buy back his electrics uh, with a price not high enough. Right, because the Vietnamese government sub um, subsidized electricity. Yes. So that's why we were thinking about with the trees and all the biomass will generate biodiesel as opposed to yeah. electricity. And he said like in Thailand you can buy 14 or 15 cents per kilowatt hour. In Vietnam it's just nine. Yeah. So we, we hosted um, these uh, maker movement promotion forums in Chiang and Ho Chi Minh, and recently, and we joined me in Hanoi and Canton too. So we.